Hi everyone, it's Cassie. Welcome back for another Pear Blossom Press video. Today we're going to be using a one light. We're going to light up a pot of gold. So this is the one light. If you are unfamiliar with it, I love them, but be careful, they're a gateway. <laughs> we're also going to be using this Pear Blossom Press stamp set. We're going to be using the vellum that's in the store. This is a multicolor pack, which is amazing. We've got the sentiment stock. You guys know I love that. We also have a couple of products from Trinity Stamps. This is the uh, Real Treasure Stamps and Dies, and then we have our Leprechaun Loot Dies. These were just recently released, and as soon as I saw them, I knew I wanted to light up that pot of gold. So we're gonna take out the die. We're gonna go ahead and use some of that black sentiment stock to cut out our pot um, because it's not just for sentiments. That stuff is amazing. It's nice and block and or black and matte finish, which is great. And then I'm gonna use one of my alcohol markers. This is my Olo marker to color a piece of white cardstock because I wanted a specific color of green. And then I die cut out my little shamrocks. I'm using a gel pen to just put a little heart or a little highlight accent in the corner of each of those. And then I'm going to take that white gel pen and add just a couple of highlights to our pot. I am terrible at highlights. This is why I'm sitting there contemplating because you know there are some masters out there with the highlights. Cassie is not one of them. <laughs> so we do our best, right? <laughs> All right, so I have a piece of cardstock that measures five and a half inches by eight and a half inches. We are scoring that at four and a quarter. This is an A2 size card. And I went through my stash of patterned paper. I am on a craze right now of patterned paper, just like playing with what I have, which is always fun to do. Go back to what you have. And I am going to trim down this patterned paper. It's not attached to the card base yet. I wanted this to be wonky on the front of my card base. And don't ask me why I didn't cut the top off yet because I probably should have but I didn't So we're playing around kind of trying to see where I want the gold to go because I need to die cut it out of that green cardstock So I'm gonna keep playing around my suggestion or my little tip for everybody is especially when you're trying to um, Play around with these one lights or use the one lights. It is always a good idea to check yourself several times <laughs> I say that because sometimes I've put things down in the wrong area and you're going to see that you're going to see, you're going to see me screw something up. Uh, and, and we'll see that in a second, but I'm going to pull out that one light. I've got the battery and one of the one lights, this was a five pack. Obviously I'm already using it, but they're easy to put together. Just line up the plus sign with the plus sign. And then you have your light ready to go. Like I said, this is a gateway. Once you start these, you're going to want to try the other lights because it's so much fun to make a light up card. And my nieces and nephews and even some of my friends, a lot of my friends actually can attest to how fun these light up cards are. All right. So playing around with that. Uh, and as you can see, I, I used the pot or the gold itself to die cut out some of that gold vellum. I'm going to attach down my light to the front of my card base using some rip and stick tape. And you're gonna see I put it down wrong, but I didn't push it down, so we're okay. I just set it on there. Uh, this is what I'm talking about. You gotta check yourself. I didn't put the light, it's the button. <laughs> so the button <laughs> is where the light should be. Oh goodness. Anyway, flip it around and we've fixed ourselves without any damage. All right, moving on. I'm going to mark where I want my paper to be just with a pencil very, very lightly so I can erase that later. And this is where I, again, probably should have cut that paper ahead of time. I'm going to go ahead and flip that over and just use a pair of scissors to mark it. And then I'll bring in my guillotine trimmer to trim that down. Okay, now I want to attach that vellum to the back because I want this to be two layers. The two layers will make it so that you really can't see the mechanism itself. And so that's why I'm doing two layers, that one on the back. And then I'm just going to use a little bit of glue on the bottom portion because we know that with vellum, anywhere that you show glue or tape or anything like that is typically going to show through. So I didn't want that showing through at the top, so I don't use it at the top. I'm not concerned about that poking up because the pot itself is going to cover most of that. So it'll keep it down and in place. It's already looking super cute. And again, I keep going back and playing just to make sure that the light is where I want it to be. And I'm already in love. Okay, so now I'm going to add the little gold pieces. I did die cut out. There's a die with this that cuts out all those little gold pieces. And when you die cut 
the big gold like pile, there are some indentions, some embossed edges where you could leave it if you wanted, or you add these little gold pieces to make them have a little bit of dimension. And because these are small enough, I'm not worried about that glue showing through because they're nice and tiny. I did die cut the gold themselves a couple different times because I wasn't sure how many I was going to want. And I will use a couple more of those later on. But that looks pretty good. And now I need to stamp out my sentiments. And then once again, that comes from the Real Treasure Stamps and Dies. I'm just using some VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink to stamp out those sentiments. And it says, wishing you a, and then the other one is, and all the joy your heart can hold. And then I'm going to have the big pot of gold stamped out and embossed later. Now I embossed it wrong, so I'm not gonna show you that. I used a chunky glitter, or not glitter, but a chunky embossing powder. Fine detail, especially for sentiments, is always the best way to go. So I did pull that out and I, I cut that and then heat set it off camera. I'm gonna use the die that can go along with this, tack that down with a little bit of mint tape and run that through my die cutting machine. And then I'm going to trim down all of my sentiments. As you can see, Wishing You A got trimmed a little too closely, so I will restamp that and trim that a little bit better. I'm telling you, I was on, I was struggling today. <laughs> I'm sure you saw that earlier with a few other things, like my pencil rolling through the glue. <laughs> all right, we persevere though, don't we, friends? We persevere. Okay, always checking. Our next step would be to bring in the world's best foam tape. And I really don't think that's a lie, the title. I really do think this stuff is amazing. If you've never tried it, I highly, highly suggest it if you like making shakers, if you like making light-ups, because this is the perfect thickness. And bonus, it is repositionable for a small amount of time. And then it is like permanently adhered after about 24 hours. I love this stuff. I am notorious, as you saw earlier, for sticking things down in the wrong spot. And so I have ruined many a card Yes, I admit it, many a card by using foam tape and then trying to pull it up and you're like, well, that didn't work. So I always get a little nervous. I never get nervous using this world's best foam tape because it really is. I did happen to get it down right the first time. So yay for Cassie, but that is not always the case. All right, so playing around again because it's a light up, why not? And now I'm going to kind of pay attention to where I want my sentiments to go. As you can tell, I didn't trim those down yet. I wasn't sure, and I'm still not sure, <laughs> how I'm going to cut that sentiment, but I will eventually decide. So I'm putting an angle at that, and then we're gonna glue down the top one, and trying to make this all look visually appealing, the bottom, because you want your eye to go a certain way. The bottom one is going to need a couple pieces of foam tape, so I'm just gonna trim down some some small pieces to put that at the very bottom of the sentiment. And then I'll peel off that release paper. And then we're also going to use a little bit of glue on the upper portion of the sentiment just to adhere it to the green. And then that part is going to be on there. Next up, we're going to put our pot of gold on there. I don't at this point suggest maybe using any more foam tape because you already have a bunch on there. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and glue mine down. Now would be the time to embellish. And so I'm going to bring in our little shamrocks to put down on top of our pot. I feel like that just adds a little extra. You could bring in some gold gems if you wanted to. That would be super fun. I am going to take a couple more of the coins and we're going to put that down at the bottom near the sentiment. Um, but before I do that, I need to have my push element. So this is where that Pear Blossom Press stamp set comes in. It's such a cute little stamp set. It's got all the things you would need for a light up card. And this one says push here. It's small, it's perfect. And so I'm gonna trim that down and then we'll adhere that to the card here in a couple of seconds. But again, I have to use the big light bulb stamp on the back that says handmade for you because this is a light up card. So it's perfect. And I found that I'm doing that every time I make a light up card. So we've attached down our press here, and then here's where I add those last couple pieces of the gold at the very bottom. Once those are adhered, that will finish off our card, but I'm gonna have everything I use listed and linked down below so you can go check all of that out. I really love how this turned out. I can't wait to give it to who I'm thinking I wanna give it to. And if you like this card, please hit that like button. Definitely consider subscribing if you haven't already. And be sure to check out all that Pear Blossom Press has going on over on their blog. 
Facebook page and Instagram for more crafty inspiration. Thanks for stopping by and we'll see you soon.